warning, some viewers may find this content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Once again, it is midnight lycanthropy time here on Star Fox Radio. This is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> Much better. Absolutely delicious. Now that I am revamped, recharged, and ready to stalk the dog man. It is time for Ernie Davio and myself to take a walk into the darkness. My creatures of the night, yes, welcome back to another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. Again, our co-host, Ernie, has decided to grace us with some amazing information as to what is occurring in the Dogman phenomenon. Ernie, my friend, long time no talk. Well, not really, but really, how you doing? Yeah, yeah I'm doing pretty darn good, yeah, I had a couple of days off tomorrow off so i'm resting up my getaway sticks here so i'm doing pretty good how about you that's excellent this is good are you and your wife going on any sort of trips where you get some time off or what's going on with you your way no we had to do just a little bit of work around the house here and uh outside catching up mowing the lawn you know and in uh, gardening she does a lot of the gardening and planting flowers and all of that out there and I go out there and sit out there and maybe I played a Native American flute once in a while. So I'll sit out there and practice a little bit. But that's about it for me. Well, that sounds really excellent and relaxing. And I can imagine you must have a pretty good lawn. I live in an area where we're in definitely a largely forested spot that was cleared out to an extent but we don't really grow grass there's a ton of trees and wildlife around here there is some people that have better lawns but for the most part it's it's like a weedy kind of lawn if you know what i'm talking about (laughs) with like roots and stuff that's pretty cool sweet so dogman wise have you heard anything interesting that you would like to dive into tonight or do you have any thoughts in general as to potentially what's going on i'm going to hand you the mic and the stage here for a second and uh, let's dance my friend yeah, I haven't heard anything. There, there's a lot more accounts coming out, and I thought we would touch on may, maybe one of the potential reasons why there's a lot more accounts coming out, which is going to make it hard to differentiate between fact and fiction on there. Um, as far as, well, the land between the lakes, there's been a, two more accounts down there over the past th- three weeks or so, right before Memorial Day, all the way up until present time and if anybody remembers uh the land between lakes is that's one of the most famous encounters down there was with martin groves so other than that i really haven't heard anything from any of the groups even up in your way how about you have you heard anything new or in the line of of the dog man themselves or so First off, excellent. I appreciate everything you just stated right there. And once I answer this question, if you could dive into some of the latest encounters you heard down there, that would be really excellent because I have not been informed about those yet. 
keep in mind when I'm up in the Northeast though. So, you know, sometimes things that are occurring down in areas like that, it takes a little bit for some of my team members to inform me about what's going on. But mm-hmm. to answer your question, I always get stuff about Dogman, but the real question is whether or not it's legitimate. So that's what I'm always trying to figure out because on the daily, we get a ton of emails that are in regards of quote unquote, the dog man. But as you stated, there could potentially be some reasonings about that. So if you want to maybe tell us a little bit about some of these new encounters down there, but then also why you think that some of the encounters are on the spike. The encounters down there, they all seem to be pretty much the, the same right now. They're not close up. So there's they're, they're, they aren't very good descriptions at all. They're at a distance or crossing the roads in front of them. You know, and these are all, all dirt roads and, and they're they're out. We'll call it the boondies out there in the land between the lakes. Um, my thing is that we're going to wind up getting an awful lot of people that are going to be um, stepping forward and you and I were just talking about this uh before we came on here and I don't know if the listeners have ever heard of this and it's called this man or the ever dream man well this was something that went back to 2006 and it happened to involve a psychiatrist and his patient and the psychi the patient uh, the psychiatrist's name was Andre Nutella and he actually created the website because of what he his patient told him and described that this man kept coming to him in a dream. Well, he started focusing on that phenomenon. And uh, according to the website, the individual to report the dream about uh, was uh, dreaming this, this individual. Other patients started coming forward and they were saying that they he had a picture. He drew a picture of the guy. And they were saying they seen the guy. All in all, he wound up having 9,000 accounts. And this was worldwide. This actually went into um, Berlin, Los Angeles, Tehran, Glasgow, London, Beijing, Rome, Cape Town, Barcelona, Stockholm, Paris, on and on, Ottawa. The list goes on and on. The point here is that in the end, it's called a guerrilla marketing campaign, and it was a hoax. And all these people that were claiming, and you, we can't say that they did not dream it, it could be a fact of subliminal suggestion. That's something that they were using back in the 60s in the movie theaters on, on people that went to the... To, the walk-in movie theaters like let's all go to the lobby and get candy they would play it for just maybe two seconds during a movie you wouldn't even really notice it but subliminally it was it was getting you and you would go to the lobby and get your popcorn or whatever that being said i think that what might be going on that we have to be careful of is a lot of people are going to come forward because it's i don't want to call it programmed but it's been put into their head. So now they might see something and it takes away from uh, the actual real encounters, the close up encounters. We know that they're there. OK, we, we uh, really have to scrutinize and take great detail when we're speaking with eyewitnesses, hair length, you know, skin tone. Things like that. I mean, let's let's say I don't I don't know any. Maybe you do, Kenny, of some encounters that were extremely close. The one that I did hear that was down in Tennessee involved a gentleman. To give you an all idea, that used to have a, a white shepherd, and this dog would actually come up to him and put its head near him like it wanted to be scratched behind the ear. It was something that just that dog did. It was kind of unusual. So he would do that. He would always scratch that dog behind the ear, rub behind his ear, and it would turn its head and he'd rub behind the other ear. Well, what had happened was is him and his family went on a camping trip in a Winnebago, and he lost control of the Winnebago when it almost went over a cliff. When, indeed, this dog man appeared alongside of the road, white 
dog man, mind you. And several others, came, I think three or four came out of the brush line alongside of the road. And they actually pushed that Winnebago back up onto the road. Now, here's the clincher on it. That white one, actually, the other ones were snarling afterwards, but that white one seemed to be in control, and it came over to the Winnebago, the driver's side, and stuck part of his head in like it wanted its ear rubbed. That's um, phenomenal. We can't say it didn't happen, that's for sure. You know, those of us who have actually had bona fide experiences, um but could that possibly be something else besides that you know and if not then then what could it be so i'm going to present that to the people that are listening to try to comprehend what's going on there and i mean these people that you listen to they're, I've taken many accounts, they're extremely believable when they tell the story. I couldn't even tell that story the way they tell that story. You know, they're actually frightened and, you know, the breathing is there and everything, and it's very believable. So what do you think could be going on there? Well, first off, just trying to process all that, that is yeah. mind-boggling for sure yeah. so i'm trying yeah. to just decipher inside of my brain just mm -hmm. all that that occurred yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree with like you were saying i'm going to use more of a common terminology of quote-unquote figment of our imaginations as you were stating about how all of a sudden people started popping up with all this and yeah. that's a straight up reality and it's unfortunate but it's a marketing technique as well when people do that to groups because you spark a new idea about a phone here a computer and you'll just see how everyone else starts either thinking about it or it just pops up in different variants so same consensus as to what you were just speaking about with the whole brain and dream theory yeah i do also think that people convince ourselves sometimes that we are seeing things that we might not be okay because of you and i have spoken about it before our minds are definitely more advanced in regards of not more advanced but we just look at things differently because we're trying to process everything whereas for an example like a fox extremely intelligent all animals are smart because they need to survive but i'm just going to use a fox because foxes are my favorite animal hence my star fox whatever okay cool back to what we're talking about yet if they're in danger okay they understand they're in danger they're not really more or less trying to think about and process fully what this predator or what this thing is coming at them they're not sitting there trying to piece it together they just know they're in trouble and they leave okay whereas you and i are trying to understand why we're in trouble or trying to see what it is that's causing us to feel this way and if we can't fully see right in front of us throughout bushes or tall grass that our mind because we are creative as humans starts to try to piece together what it is in there but our ancestors did deal with massive monsters meaning lions and bears that lived in the grass and some of those still could be kicking around but more or less that's installed to who we are okay that's why if for the most part loud noises at night wake people up because if you didn't wake up with a loud noise in your camp that was probably a bear or something coming to get you and the people that didn't wake up well guess what they never woke up okay so those type of feelings and things are always going to be installed inside of us which is why we've survived this long okay and the ones that don't follow quote unquote their gut feelings didn't survive but we are in more controlled conditions now so if yeah you're getting yourself completely psyched up to go out in the forest because you've been watching all this cryptid stuff and of course your mind's going to start wanting to potentially create stuff just because that's what humans minds do it's nothing against anybody it's just the way we were genetically hardwired it's that's how our minds work so if you get yourself amped up of course it's no different than like 
when you watch a horror movie, okay, I'm an adult, right? But I'm still scared of what's <laughs> under my bed or if it's total darkness in my room in my closet. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. That's the same thing when I was a child, man. Nothing is going to grab me from under my bed, okay? It can't fit under there. But yet when I get up in the middle of the night, that thought always crosses my mind, okay? Why? Because I've watched horror movies and things that have installed that type of fear. And also, again, the natural fear of the unknown or what's lurking around the corner is the reason we've gotten this far. And if we didn't follow that, again, you and I would not be sitting here having this conversation. But the point of that is working ourselves up, right? So another great example, like I just stated, we live in an area with a ton of wildlife. Every once in a while, even though there are a bunch of houses in here, you get deer that walk pretty close to your house just right there, okay? It's 3.20 in the morning, I believe it was. Maybe even a little later, give or take. I just got done researching a bunch of document stuff. I'm out in the kitchen. I just opened the fridge, so that's the only really illumination. And there's some street lights, and some people have a little bit of yard lights. But I see this kind of shadow go by that is pretty decently sized. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I see another one. And obviously the first thought, just because I've been researching Dogman for the past four hours, is what the Christmas trees? What is this unknown thing outside? Well, as I look closer, because one of the last deer goes out in the middle of the road, yeah, it's a deer. And deer are decent sized. So, of course, when you first see that, like I just said, it's an example to give people of how our minds are creating stuff. Like I could think I see you driving down the road because it's the same car. Oh, there's Ernie and his wife. I start waving, hey, hey, honking. The person in the car with their wife's looking at you like, dude, who the heck are you, man? Oh, crap, that's not Ernie and his wife. Oops. You see what I'm saying? But you could have sworn it was because it looked just like them because your mind started to create the fact that it was them. So no, that's a really important thing you brought up because I think yeah. because people are diving in so much to yeah. the topic or just being around so many other people, A, it's going to brush off, but also, unfortunately, people that are liars and such, when you convince yourself of something over and over again, pathological yeah. liars believe it. So you could sit there and just tell yourself over and over again, you've had an experience and you're eventually going to believe that as well. Exactly. You know, and and take taking this to, and putting it into perspective for people. If I've got to take an eyewitness encounter, it's dark out, but I got to go to somebody's house, we'll say. And, you know, it's spooky. There's an old Civil War cemetery with people from the pioneer days buried in the cemetery with tipped over stones. And it's a full moon, a little cloudy and maybe a tiny bit foggy. And you get there and the people are freaked out inside. I've got to maintain control, but here's the thing. Here's the clincher to remember these some questions to ask people. And you should be asking yourself these things, too, like Kenny, like you're talking about here. What is that that went out by my window right here? You're challenging yourself. So one of the things that I would be asking, I would be saying, hey, and some of us have had this happen with our parents. Actually, they know it wasn't a good idea to let us watch a scary movie before we went to bed when we were younger, but I would be saying, okay, so what was on your mind? What were you thinking about before that? Uh, do you believe in, 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 do you believe in dog man or, or Bigfoot or anything like that, or slender man or anything like that? And, and, you know, the truth will come out right there. It'll give you an idea where to go on that, that this person's mind could have been playing tricks on them. And then you could proceed from there because the same as it could be playing a trick on that person, it can also play a trick on you. And that's why you really have to challenge it. You have to walk, you have to suck it up, put the big boy pants on and walk towards it, okay? If it's a werewolf, then you're gonna be a werewolf sometime in the next 30 days. <laughs> if, if not, you're all okay. It might be just a dog, man, or deer, but all you see is the shadow and a shadow cast the right way can look amazingly big so your mind will play those simple little tricks on you and again i got to go back and say when you're speaking with somebody because let's face it we some people might not have an encounter but they're going to encounter somebody who had an encounter and that person wants to talk about it so you have to sit down with them and listen to it but you can't be negative about it either you know you have to let them get it all out because for them this is a real thing that happened in their mind you know, that you might be able to sort it out over time 
and help them out with it and say, do you think and maybe they won't go that down that road? You know, maybe they'll stick with that. You know, there are some really horrific um, um, things that have happened to people that have been out there in the woods. You know, and that might be even more terrifying for you to sit down with somebody under the circumstances that I just described and uh, start taking an account down only to know that you're going to have to leave that house and get in your car out there in the dark and drive down some old deserted road to get back to civilization, knowing that it's a strong possibility that one of these things are definitely out there. Again, well stated, and I still have my response from your original question, so don't don't worry, I didn't forget about that one. But no, that's, again, excellent point. And I'm a super creative person. I've been creative my whole life, okay? And yes, so I've always thought, like, werewolves. And I'm not a big horror person, meaning I don't... Yeah, I've seen, like, Freddy and Jason and stuff. That's just not really my swag. I've always thought creature features, I'm going to use that term, is cool. Like, werewolves, vampires, zombies, like, witches, I don't know, gods, demons, monsters. Just not hack and slay. Where, I mean, it's no really no different. It's still, like, it's some sort of crazy animal or something. But, so, yes, growing up, I've always found things like that super intriguing. An example, on Halloween one time, my mom had me dress up in this really amazing werewolf outfit because there used to be local Halloween costumes, and she was super creative, and we'd always – we won like three years in a row. One time, I was Super Mario with a raccoon tail. Another time, uh, I was a, a crazy cool vampire, and this particular time when I had won, she decked me out as an amazing werewolf. Well, it was Halloween, so I was sitting in the chair outside, and some of the you know kids would come up. I was pretty young myself, but to get candy, and they would be like, wow, look at this, like the parents of the kids or the pa- kids of the parents, and they would come up and try to you know touch me or something else, and I'd be like, wow, and they'd be like, ah, and like, it, so more or less, like I'm saying, that's always just... Yeah, the creativity inside of me. Okay, so now, though, yes, of course, even before I ever started researching, I mean, I've been aware of this topic since high school, but even when I would go outside back then, okay, there used to be an extension as to where I'd live. It was a room my parents built on, so I could, you know, I was 18 or so at this point in time so that I could come and go. And I used to think it would be cool to go outside, like, and look at the moon sometimes. But same thing, I would literally only have to run 30 yards or so, if indeed, back to my house. But now what I do know about Dogman and all that stuff, I would have been toasted. But every time I'd be running, I would swear something was behind me, but nothing was. Just because my creative mind of watching too many werewolf movies or something. And I would just see my own shadow on the side of the house running. And I would just, for some reason, run to my back door, slam and lock it. And always think there was going to be some sort of monster behind me. Obviously, there never was, okay? So now fast forward to the fact that I'm researching this topic all the time. I've never had any sort of paranormal encounters, zero. But now that I'm more entwined because I'm always researching this, when I'm going out and about, I'm just thinking now, or I just look out in this field, wow, I wonder if a dog man would run by, okay? And the reason I'm saying this is now, same thing with other people, right? I They could just be seeing something like you were stating, deer or a bear or something, especially a bear or something that does look more canine-ish. And because you are so entwined because of the research or just exposed to the topic, you immediately assume that, whereas someone that might not have ever been exposed to that topic just might be like, it's a bear or a deer. They just look at it more logically. So it all ties into exactly like what you were saying. But back to anything Up close and personal, I would say, obviously, people have heard some of the more infamous ones, like Martin Gross case and such. But for the most part, I feel like a majority of these so-called really up close and kind of out of this world encounters have been debunked, meaning like, for example, like the Gable film up in your face and just some of the other type of stuff that's out there. Okay, and I can't remember who said it, but it's amazing. The statement of i believe how she worded it is amazing or outstanding encounters require outstanding evidence or something along the lines of that choose and plug in your own words to that but yes anything that's out of this crazy hollywood style type encounter you need the hollywood crazy to back up all that all right if the werewolf busts down the wall 
and ran ripping up the stairs and ripped down the wall here and tore this person apart and did this and that. All right. Well, in theory, this sounds great. Okay. If it did that to your dog while you're out in the middle of the woods and ripped it all apart and it did survive, but it had scratch marks all over it and you needed to bring it to the vet because it had a dislocated shoulder and broken hips. Again, all sounds amazing, but where you need to then be able to supply that evidence. Can I see the x-rays? Can, do you have pictures of how the right. ear was shredded up, like where it looked like spaghetti? Do you have, you know, images of the wall that's been broken down? Is there these claw marks everywhere? Like you said, like, can you supply that? So again, it all ties back into what you said at the beginning of having to make sure that things are done correctly and healthy, skeptical questions are okay. All right. And I think a lot of people tend to not understand that they think that by someone being skeptical about something it's negative and it's not it's a way to properly figure out things and that's literally everything that you and i have just spoken about and if those type of encounters are going to be presented as quality in your face encounters i think there needs to be evidence with that but to fully answer your question another kind of up close and personal encounter like that that as far as I know, has not had any holes plugged into it, is the Thibodeau brothers down in Lake Texacoma when they were fishing and their light was going on and out and they've spoken to us and they've, they've been on these woods are haunted. So there are other outlets where people can see their encounter and hear it. So if you don't want to hear it through us, the North American Dogman Project or myself, again, I just stated in other spots, you can hear it yet we cover it just like they cover it and yeah their lights going on and off and they can't get it going on the boat and there's a few of these things that are looking like these crazy dogman type like animals that are coming after them and that's a pretty up close and personal one and again like they were able to supply a lot of the there was more than one person both the brothers as well as their friend are speaking and such so again their story wasn't really out of this crazy world like horror movie but there was some stuff that is pretty up in your face but they were able to you know supply that show you their old rusty wires on the boat and stuff and how they wouldn't work like that and such so i just think it's important that's all because majority of the encounters like you were stating are the ones going across the road and and just 35 10, 15 second type encounters. And those are actually in my eyes, much easier to validate and are more useful in an extent sometimes because they, if for 30 seconds, somebody sees something running across a field quadrupedally and then bipedally, well, right there, we're able to then pick up a pattern of how it's moving. Whereas for example, the encounter you were just telling me about super cool, but where the yeah. gentleman scratching the dog behind the ear or the, sorry, yeah. the dog man, et cetera. That's a, that sounds great, man. But is there potentially anything to verify any of that? And it's just, again, back to what we tie into it. We would like to think humans are these great witnesses, but we're not, man. And I've given examples over and over again about how we see something in the water. Oh, it was like 30 feet long. Well, because there's nothing else to judge it. But then people that can actually judge size by wavelength and things are like, no, that's only like a 10 foot log. That's not a 30 foot like sea monster, etc. We're not good at that. And also we dream people are half awake sometimes half asleep so could right. that be hey i don't know about you and i've had dreams sometimes especially nightmares or dreams in general of maybe past girlfriends or something where i was chilling with them on the beach or i don't know i'm giving examples it all seems very real okay and as far as i know i'm fully asleep and then when i wake up i'm in my bed my former girlfriend's not chilling with me i don't or i'm not being chased by some sort of monster in my dream i'm in my room and i woke up okay so what i'm trying to say though is sometimes people sleepwalk and other things so it also does make you wonder sometimes when people are having maybe these encounters where they thought it was coming in their room or they be having night terrors just be half asleep you think could be absolutely it could be um you know i'm glad you said that about you know like seeing something for the average encounter is only between five and 12 seconds and that's really not a very long period of time to take in information, but like the Thibodeau brothers, 
keep, keep in mind that these people, they didn't have any, they didn't worry, they weren't worried about nighttime out there on the water or anything. They didn't have any preconceived notions in the back of their minds or anything that, you know, maybe, a, maybe a snake or something like that. So, uh-huh. and, and, and myself, you know, and what happened to me and other people, like some of the hunters that, that I've taken witness accounts from, that they had no preconceived notions about what they were going to see outside there, only hoping that they were going to see a deer, you know? So, you know, for them to give me the, the information and the way that they give me the information is uh, profound, okay? Although I have had uh, <clears throat> one account where we had a forensic artist working with us on this one here, and it was quite lengthy. But when it came right down to actually describing, I'm going to call it a juvenile, uh, the even the forensic artist didn't really get it right away. And we finished the session with the individual. We didn't want them to feel bad, but they were terrorized by this, you know, and there was a lot of information in it. But the way that the picture came out, it looked like Raggedy Andy or Raggedy Ann with the with the red circles on the cheeks and the red lipstick and the red hair. I mean, obviously there was, I mean, if that's running around the woods, then we got a huge problem here, you know, but we never said that to the witness, you know, and these are the things we, we felt strongly that there was something involved that that individual didn't know of. Maybe uh, they had too much cream in their coffee that morning while they were yes. camped out. You know, and that's what strongly, and I don't want to go into it, but that is strongly what we thought might have been going on with this gentleman. He was absolutely terrified of what had happened, and it was not just that one time. This happened over years at this, at this campsite that they were at hunting at, him and a good friend of his. You know, but um, those are all things that 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 play into this. You know, you, Kenny, grew up in a wonderful generation where, you know, me during Halloween, the only thing that ever won the Halloween costume was the skeleton. And I could never (laughs) and I could never understand that. You know, it was it was absolutely the worst costume I'd ever seen. And I was (laughs) trying to do like you did. You know, so. I'm glad somebody put some a little bit of artistic ability into it and did something with that and, uh, you know, played it well. But my generation, no, I don't care what you did. Every single year, it was always the skeleton, one first place. <laughs> I don't, maybe preconceived notions of people, what, what terrorized them, you know, that wouldn't terrorize me, a skeleton running around. Well, it's funny you say that as well as we get ready to wrap this up and let you get back to what you're doing. But again, because that was what was scary, more or less, kind of back then. So that also, again, ties into what we were saying about people, you know, seeing things more, et cetera. Because, again, what scares us now in comparison to, hey, a skeleton now is just kind of a skeleton after I've seen some of the werewolf movies and like, you know, America yeah. Werewolf in London, like you were saying. So yeah, back then a skeleton was scary, but imagine showing like the guy from American Werewolf in London has half of his exactly. face hanging off and he's talking to his buddy the whole movie as he's rotting away. You yeah. Know? So, yes. it, it was hysterical. I mean, you know, those are the things that would terrify me is like a witch you know, a, a witch story or a, or a werewolf or something like that, that'd be, that'd be freaking me out. But that's where my, my mind was way back then, you know, for a scary movie or something. I mean, Bella Lugosi, he could really, he could terrify you just by talking to you. you know? Vincent Price. Yeah. He was good with that. Too, Vincent yes. Price, same thing. He just, he just looked kind of uh, um, like specter like, you know, and his but, voice just legendary for sure. So absolutely, he's one of the absolute tops, I believe, you know, in in his field. But um, yeah, I just wanted people to understand that when you hear some of these stories, um, you just give them a thumbs up or something because there's going to be all kinds of people. Don't be fooled by when you see them as people like us. We know that that you're you're not really being truthful mm-hmm. on. There, there are things that stick out to us. You know, we know the difference between a skeleton at a Halloween 
party in, in the wolf man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. That's very well stated. And I do just encourage anybody. I am very pro about that. There is nothing that I don't want help quote unquote debunking or verifying because that's how and why I'm here in the first place. Okay. And I'm not trying to say anyone that has made up a hoax about a cryptid encounter is in the overall picture a bad person okay they could be a great family man or woman or they could have done amazing things like cleaning up the earth i'm i don't know them personally all i know is what you presented to me or someone else as something that was fraudulent in what we're trying to figure out so my goal is just to make sure that i'm able to show things that we can't really figure out, which is the whole point, tracks or exactly. missing here and et cetera. So, yeah, yeah. of course, we're going to not solidify something and put our name or stamp of approval right. on it. I know I'm not. And before, right. you know, we end this right here, something like my little brother was saying. And again, for an example, I love wearing jerseys of sports stars I look up to and Jeremy Swayman from the Boston Bruins, like you and I have talked about before. I love that kid. The goalie for the Bruins played at UMaine. Great dude. Does all kinds of amazing things for people. He's a great guy. But if I ever found out, right, that he was, you know, a terrible family person or did bad things to right. children and women, I would no longer wear his jersey. I would no longer want his autograph on my wall. Yeah. So more or less what I'm trying to give yeah. examples to is a stamp of approval. I'm not going to put my stamp of approval on anything in life that I don't do my research on, okay? I'm not going to wear someone's yeah. name on the back of myself and walk around and promote them as a person if they're horrible, okay? And again, I'm not going to walk around and try to present stuff to the scientific community that can't be fully verified and backed up by stuff. So maybe somebody that has a really extravagant story, I'm not saying that didn't happen to them, but at the end of the day, what I'm saying is if I don't have anything to verify that, it doesn't really exist to the scientific community except the testimonial. And last time I checked, there's plenty of testimonials that either don't work in court or et cetera. So. You're exactly right. You know, people, um, that they don't understand when they're hoax and what they're doing is they're really hurting the person that really had an encounter, you know, like myself, you know, I've gotten over it. My, th my skin has gotten a lot thicker, but when you do that, uh, some of the people that maybe just had an encounter yesterday, um, they're traumatized over it. And for you to fake something is for somebody to fake something you're in knowingly fake something you're now not just a hoaxer. You're a liar, and you're you're you're. It's just being a cruel person because yes. you're 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 destroying. You're muddying the waters for the real evidence, is what you're doing. So you have to be able to differentiate when you're speaking with somebody, or you're, you're watching somebody else's channel, and you hear of an encounter. You know what we look for in an encounter is not just the story of it. We're trying to find evidence in the story that collaborates other things that are going on in other people's stories. So we can piece the puzzle together like behavioral things that these dog men are doing or these Bigfoot are doing is just similar in these other stories. And we're finding that yes, indeed it is. So now we have an eyewitness that doesn't even know the other eyewitness that they seen the same maybe hand signal or whatever it may be. You know, so we know that the two are linked and this is this is research. We're going from hypothesis to theory. And we've talked about that before. Um, that being said, can I make a plug here, Kenny? Of course you can. Absolutely. I, I, I just want to let people know if you want to see some of the drawings, they're on T-shirts. You can ask for any drawing you want and put them on a T-shirt. It's on Itsy New England Encounters. And those drawings were, were done uh, by uh, a lady by the name of Sibylla Irwin. She worked on them for months. And Kenny helped out big time on making it so that we could enlarge them and put them on T-shirts for everybody. You let us know which one you want. These are not AI generated. These This is the real McCoy. This is something that was seen in an encounter, a live encounter that lasted for quite a while. And it involves sign language. And I'll let it go with that. Yeah, no, I can definitely verify all that and make sure you do send me the links to that. So that way I can make sure to put it up in the description yeah. of the video. And yeah, no, I did 
see all the images and he is correct. I did work on those and they are nothing to do with AI. And I do know a ton about AI and such because I do my own art, but I have four or five different AI apps as well. And you can tell when something is definitely hand drawn or created from yeah. organic stuff or if something is AI. Don't get me wrong. AI can be very beautiful, but you can still tell it's not organically created. So no, yeah. thank you so much for everything, man, tonight and do thank appreciate you. you, man. Yeah. Same here, Ken. You have a wonderful night tonight. And if you got any old pictures of you in that, in that, raccoon outfit or or dot or wolf werewolf outfit I, i'd love to see that <laughs> thank you again for everyone who stopped by the fox den tonight for another episode of midnight lycanthropy here on star fox radio if you do enjoy my content please like subscribe and share it feed the algorithm and until next time stay safe out there